Well, it's always a pleasure to be joined here on GCR by one of the most iconic voices in baseball history. And he just wrote a really thoughtful piece at The Athletic about Adley Rutschman. Um, I don't think I've ever told him this before, but once upon a time when I was a child, he was the man I wanted to grow up to be. He is <laughs> Mr. Peter Gammons, and he's with us here on GCR. Peter. I'm glad you didn't go astray. <laughs> <laughs> Peter, no, I really, it's not, it's, by the way, it's not a joke at all. My, my, my folks, my, my father would say, I looked up and I said, I want to be like Peter Gammons. He gets to talk about baseball on TV. There, there can't be anything better than that. That's got to be the life. Thank you for taking the time for us, sir. Really appreciate it. Um, I, I got to tell you, this is a topic that we have talked about a lot. As you know, everybody in Baltimore, over the moon, excited about Adley Rutschman. But I worry. I worry about our expectations. I think in Baltimore we are setting up for if he is not an amalgamation of Mike Piazza's bat and Pudge Rodriguez behind the plate, um, we're going to be disappointed by it. And I just don't know if that's fair um, as far as expectations for Adley Rutschman. I don't think it is. I, mean, I think he's going to be a really good player. And a lot of that has to do with makeup, which I'll talk about, and what what catcher demands. Catcher demands. Let's just start with this. And Brad Ross was, I believe, caught the six most games in baseball history. It was a great catcher. Johnny Bench, Ted Simmons, they've all said the same thing. The single most important thing a catcher does is create conviction in pitchers. The whole the whole thing with the uh, framing thing is just that's child's play. People like to play with computers. It, it, it's it, it's handling pitching stats. And this guy, I think Rutschman's going to be great at it. And because um, he's, he's such an unselfish person. I mean, I mean, I go back, and I'll start with, with I, I've written about this. He, um, when he was, um, um, when he was 19, he came up, uh, came east to play in Cape Cod and played for Falmouth. Um, and, um, he was, he had to work on hitting. He was still way behind after his freshman year. He was struggling for, with some things. He let the, the, the manager, uh, uh, Falmouth was a phenomenal person. No, look, I, you know, I mean, I, uh, I have to make changes. No problem. He said, but it was, um, he hit 164 with one extra base hit for the season hmm. and um, was was by far the most valuable player on that team. And um, there was another player who got drafted in the top five, played a big bat, who uh, decided he didn't want to play the, in the playoffs because he wasn't playing third base because he can't play third base. <laughs> but that's another matter entirely. <laughs> but Rushman is just a phenomenal person. And I, I love the story. In his first game, they were playing at Chatham. So – he jogs out to the bottom of the first, uh, introduces himself to the umpire, shakes his hands, calls him sir, and drops down behind to, to, to uh, warm up the pitcher. Um, so, um, so people found him for watching went on the 21st of May when he made his debut in Baltimore because people loved him. I mean, really. Uh, and um, so... At the bottom, for the top of the first inning, he jogged out behind home plate, introduced himself to Andy Fletcher, the umpire, shook his hand, called him sir, and dropped down and uh, um, prepared to, uh, to to warm up the pitcher. And it was what the call I got was, how great this guy, he's got the biggest bonus in baseball history. Mm -hmm. it's five years later, he hasn't changed one iota, and he never will. Because that's who he is, and that's if you're looking for the for what is going to make the Orioles have to build a pitching staff, and I know it's unfortunate that Rodriguez is, might be out the rest of the year, but he's going to be there in another year. So let's and, so, and they start to build pitching. Um, he's the key guy to be able. To, if you have a young guy who already gets it behind the plate, because most don't, um, it's it's amazing, and the, that makeup. Um, is something, I mean, it, it always was. I mean, I did, uh, I've talked to friends of mine, the scouts who knew him from the Northwest, and knew him even coming out of high school. And just the makeup, the family, everything was just good. I, I think it's great. Just appreciate what he is and what he does. That's most important. I mean, that's, that's what counts. Um, and you look around in baseball, there are a lot of teams that 
end up where it's the catchers, not the guys with the stats, that end that can really handle the pitching staff. I mean, I mean, I know Yasmani Guandal has great talent and has great numbers, but it's funny how he doesn't always catch a lot in the playoffs hmm. because pitchers, are, you know, it's it's about winning and pitchers winning in the playoffs, and and that's you know the how catchers get judged uh, really aren't usually uh, often aren't really valid. It, it really depends on the, those catchers, and um, he just I, I'm so excited and. and I know. I, I I was oh, I was listening to something on the radio around the first of May, and somebody said, "Oh, geez, Bobby Witt's really been a flop." And I'm going, "Wait a minute!" Right. Now, yeah. I've known Bobby Witt's father since he was 12 years old, yeah. so I have a little bit of a personal uh, stake. But I mean, hey, wait a minute, he's 20 years old. Right. 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 But and, and he's going to be a great player, and you know, I'm not saying he's going to be right-handed George Brett. I'm not saying Rushman is going to be better than. Uh, I mean, he's not. He, he, he's not going to be Johnny Bench. Nobody else has ever been Johnny Bench, but he's going to be really good. And I mean, I, I have from the day that he came up, and I watched that on television. I've had a different feeling about the Orioles. I, I'm hmm. I'm getting it now. Hmm. And now, you know, like um, when they played in Boston. In that five game series. The topic of conversation all weekend on the Red Sox side was the Orioles' young arms in the bullpen. Now, you know, you know Jorge Lopez and all those guys going to be here three, four years from now. No, but they're so good, they're going to get them. I mean, I, I think Lopez is going to be one of the most sought after guys in the trade market. Sure. Um, and uh, I, I don't know, it's just they have a different look. Uh, and this is not knocking any former catcher, but they just, to me, they have a different look when he walks out in the field. And he he handles, he doesn't walk out there handling it like, I got $820,000 and I'm the number one pick of the country and I'm going to be a star. He handles it. Uh, the guy that, and, and I wrote about this, the guy he reminds me of as a player on a team is Buster Posey. Uh, yeah, it worked and, out okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's a that's a very. I mean, he is one. Uh, he's one of those people who's just. He's really different. He's phenomenal. I mean, you know, it, it, in his uh, first full year, he did uh, <laughs> win the World Series. But um, he's just got instincts, and the the Giants were always contenders with their pitching staff whenever he was there. And I think a, a great catcher who was so team oriented changes the nature of the team. And, um, I mean, in my mind, there's no doubt that Posey is a Hall of Famer. And anybody who played with him would tell you the same thing. Sure. And I, I just, I have a, I'm not, I'm not going to put Rushman into the, uh, I'm not going to put the burden on him to say he's going to be a Hall of Famer. But I think he's, he, when the Orioles are ready to really turn the corner in two years or whatever it is, we're going to really see how important he is. He is Peter Gammons. He's with us here on Glenn Clark Radio. We're going to link up on our Twitter account, at Glenn Clark Radio, his story from The Athletic about Adley Rutschman. Peter, if I could, I want to go a couple places based on what you said. One, um, and in the story, you, you, you know, somebody references a comparison to Matt Wieters, and it, it's such a touchy subject here because Peter, Matt Wieters was a really good baseball player. And, Darn right. And was a cornerstone piece of the best Orioles teams that some of the young people in my company have ever seen in their lives. Um, and yet there are a percentage of people in this town that if you bring up Matt Weider's name, they say the word bust because of the insane expectations that, that Joe Maurer with power, the Jesus and cleats that we thought that Matt Weider's might be, or some of us thought that way. Um, well, you know, but a lot of things happen to it. First of all, Weider's is built. It's really hard, um, to be a catcher when you're really, t when you're tall and it's hard. I mean, it's, Catching is – Pudge Rodriguez has, like, the perfect catcher's build. Mm -hmm. Actually, you know, my buddy Brad Osmus had a great catcher's build. And um, it, it, it it's hard. Plus, he had the Tommy John surgery. He held, He's a switch hitter, which complicated what he does professionally. And But he he put his soul into his pitching staff all the time, whenever he played. And I think back, you know, Matt Weiders, let's see. There was a playoff series in which 
the Orioles faced Justin Verlander, yep. Scherzer, yep. and um, David uh, Price. Okay. They swept them. Yeah, I couldn't remember if it was and Porcello that, or not. Yeah, that's a good call. It, yeah, it, Porcello's on that staff. Yep. He just didn't pitch it. But, I mean, that's – to me, that's one of the uh, most amazing playoff series that I can remember in the last decade. And, you know, Matt Weider is a big part. They really pitched well in that series. And, you know, there weren't a lot of big names coming out of that Orioles nope. pitching staff nope. at that time. But I, I, it's great to remember. And, you know, it's it, – I, uh, I, I, I reference it, Peter, because I guess the question becomes, if – if Adley Rutschman is more like Matt Wieters, who, again, was a really good baseball player, and I th- we have to say that every time we talk about this, does this rebuild work in the AL East going up against what you're going up against? Can you, can you get there if Adley Rutschman doesn't become more like a Buster Posey or you know, a, 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 a Pudge Rodriguez type of player? Well, I think it's up to the Orioles organization to draft the right players and, you know, maybe get a steal in one of those. Uh, I mean, I look at Lopez, and the game is so different. I don't mean to harp on him, but he's such a great guy to start with. But his stuff is nasty. Mm-hmm. But it, it, you think about him, the way the game is today, it's not just going out and getting a closer. Matter of fact, I mean, other than – guy at Pittsburgh, I don't think there's one closer that people talk about being on the market that is somebody you would really trade up for and he won't get traded because he isn't even arbitration eligible for two more years so he's staying in Pittsburgh Um, but um, so what you're looking for is as many matchup pieces as you can get and I look at the Orioles with Bautista, the left hand I mean they've they've got some really good matchup pieces I mean Lopez on the Red Sox, the Giants, sure. there are a lot of teams sure. for whom he would be very, very um, – matter of fact, I, I know that the, the Red Sox would uh, love to have him. Um, hmm. Alex hmm. Corey is a huge fan. They're hmm. both they're from similar area in Puerto Rico, and uh, I think they're both from Caguas, and um, they uh, he, he loves them. But, I mean, the Orioles could do this. I mean, and uh, I think, you know – it's going to be interesting. Henderson will be what up probably in another year, um, and he's only twenty we'll years see old. Some of those <laughs> outfielders and so forth, but they, you surround him with the right guys, and you start you know you get the arms, you take some chances. I think that the fact that they have four or five big arms in the bullpen right now is testament to they can go out and scout and find arms. So you develop them. Sure. And, um, so we'll see what happens. I, I just don't think – I have to say, I, the Orioles were playing in the middle to late April. I was convinced they were going to lose 100 games. Right. And I'm, I'm convinced they won't now. And um, the, the, those arms that they've gotten and really used well, um, and and um, they're just the – I really get a sense that – some of their, their not well, not the really veteran players, but there's, there's something coming up. The center fielder is a tremendous player. Uh, I just, it's very different. And now that you've got that that guy that can that can really, really work with the pitchers and and help out everybody. I don't know. I just think it's are they going to are they going to finish over 500 and be in the pe- pe- in the playoff race? No, but they can make a lot of progress. There's and, there there. Uh, yeah. And I, I just, I think it's really fun. And I, I just, I don't want, we have a tendency to listen to shows and read things. Oh, this guy's going to be the next such and such. Just let them be what they are. Um, you know, hopefully there's a 14 year old out there who, um, you know, like seven years from now, somebody is saying, oh, this guy's the next Adley Rushman. And he's not the next Johnny Bench. He's the next Adley Rushford or the next Buster Posey. And that's, you know, and the, and there's a joy there. That's all he has to be is the best of Adley Rushford, and I think he's going to be. If I could, before I let you go, Peter Gammons, and I really appreciate the time. I, there's three that I just want to touch on quickly, if I could. One, um, you mentioned, you know, what, what they might have to do. Is this, this coming off season? 
is this the time for them to start putting money into this as well? This is now, this is the fourth year of the rebuild, and we know that they certainly took a hit from the pandemic. It hurt them probably more than it hurt a lot of teams for losing that year of minor league development. But we're yep. four, four years into the rebuild. Next year will be the fifth. Is this the offseason as you see some of this progress and some of this excitement to say, hey, now's the time to match it and spend not maybe $100, $300 million, but just spend something to keep this thing moving forward? I think so. It's, it's, it's finding those – I think a couple of veterans um, who can really help young players coming along are really important. Getting the right kind of um, – they might be 28 or 30 years old. They're probably not going to start the All-Star game, but they can really help young players and bring a lot of character and experience to the team. And, you know, a, a couple of those guys are really important. Um, you know, that's uh, – I know he's not there, and I, I understand why. Buck Showalter is always brilliant at finding those guys. Mm. But that's something the Dodgers have done really well um, because they scout so heavily. And uh, um, they get, you know, they get a Justin Turner and they, 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 they find guys who aren't supposed to be great players and, and they, they end up really affecting their teammates and, and, and really pushing them forward. And um, that's, th- those are guys to find. And, you know, hopefully it's with the scouting and so forth, they can, they can do those things and help bring along the, the Hendersons and guys like that that are, that are coming. And so they get a little incrementally better, and then, you know, they, they, they get lucky with a couple of pitchers, and, and they, they keep moving forward. It's, you can't – I think what, what, a mistake the Orioles would make would be to try to say, okay, we're going to jump right into the playoffs next year. Right. Because that's – you know, to spend if it's if it's going to be two hundred, three hundred million for uh, Xander Bogarts or guys like that, it's I'm not sure that's Bogarts would be a great player for the Orioles, but I'm not sure that three hundred million dollars would be best spent that way. Right. It's best spent, and, and I think very important, which they I'm told they're doing now, which they really didn't do for uh, quite a few years. Get back into the international market. Oh, it's and whew. I think I think Sig really understands that. He's a he's a really he's a really smart man. And I I think that you're going to see uh, you'll see that. Uh, you know, I, was, I thought it was interesting the old ballpark, the, the club that he used to run when he was with the Astros, the old Tri City, uh, whatever they are. That was where um, that's where the the uh, the former. Oh, Vanderbilt Flash pitched on Saturday night. Oh, Kamura Rocker? Really? Yeah, he he threw really well. A very good friend of mine. Oh, he's interesting. He is he interesting. Story. He's, he, you know, we'll have to see because the medicals in the past have not been great. But, matter of fact, they're a little scary. But, you know, if the operation was really good, we'll have to see after four or five starts where he is. But he'll be an interesting guy in, in the draft. Um I, I don't think I mean the Orioles are, are drafting way up further and they won't go that way. Although um, I see the latest, um, it's some it's really interesting to see the latest projections on the draft, and it'll be very interesting to see where the Orioles go there. Um, um, you know, if and it, I'll wrap with this, Peter, because I you talk about the type of player they could use, and I. <laughs> It always confuses me when Orioles fans start talking about trading Trey Mancini because I, I just don't oh. think there's much to get for Trey. As, and it's good as the season he's having, and he's having a wonderful season. And we adore Trey Mancini in this city for every reason. He is a ten and a half as human beings go. But I just don't know that there is that much that you can get in a Trey Mancini trade because most teams seem to think they already have that type of player. So I... I've, I'm always befuddled by this because it seems to me like the best scenario would be to try to keep Trey Mancini around to be that guy that you're talking I, about. I couldn't agree more with you. I think Trey Mancini is an important human being to have on your team. And just to you, Drat, I'm fascinated by this. If you're looking for another uh, another character person in the Russian mold, um, uh, Jackson Holiday. Really, is, is, Matt Holiday's uh, son, of course. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a great believer in the ho- whole Holiday family, grandfather on down. 
Um, and um, his father's one of the best people I ever knew in baseball. Mm-hmm. And he's been brought up right, and he's an amazing talent. So, you know, you're, if you're building those guys, that, like you look at the Giants won 107 games last year. They didn't have any stars, but they all have guys whose agenda is just to win. And, you know, Brandon Crawford doesn't, doesn't need any more money. He just wants to win. Mm-hmm. Evan Longoria, he wouldn't even know how much money he had anyway. He, all he does is just walk <laughs> up and play baseball and love him. And Mike Yastrzemski and, and, and so forth. I mean, um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm loving for, uh, for uh, uh, Jackson Holiday and shortstop and, uh, and Ad- Adley Rushford uh, behind the plate. Uh, it, it could <laughs> end up playing out that way. I know everybody's in love with Andrew Jones' son. I know that's the, uh, the, yeah, I know that. the, the it, hot it, name. It, I'm sure he's very talented, but you know, what you have for makeup over time, it's, um, you look at those Yankee teams starting in, um, 95 when Buck Showalter was still the manager and he had assembled with Paul O'Neill's and a couple of guys like that and he brought Derek Jeter up just to be major league, uh, ready by just ha- hanging, traveling with the team the last month of the season. What was built for Joe Torrey, and Torrey did a great job, but it, that was not a team. I don't think they ever had anybody hit 40 home runs. What they had were just a bunch of really good baseball players who were there only to win every day. And uh, assembling that, I think that will be a um, – I'll be really interested to see how it goes for the Orioles because there are those of us who once loved going to <sighs> – Either ballpark. Yeah. Um, I love the old ballpark as well. And love Baltimore. And, you know, when Baltimore was a great baseball town, um, it was that whole Red Sox, Oriole, Yankee Oriole thing was so great that um, I still hope that it can be recaptured, recaptured again. And uh, we can uh, we can be back to uh, – the world of uh, of the Flanagans and Ripkins and Palmers and so forth. Peter, you've given us so much time this morning. Is there anything I can plug for you uh, besides? No, uh, ch- I'm just I'm just happy. I, believe me, I just be so happy to see. I mean, to see every team in the American League since I live on Cape Cod and I, you know, I'm go to Boston all the time. I just love seeing the American League East really good, and I want to see it five. I want to see five teams in. You know, a couple of those years where you won the division if you beat the Orioles enough. Now, that that's not the only time that's ever happened in baseball right. history. When I was a little kid, I saw the Red Sox lose 20 out of 22 to the Indians <laughs> in a year where they won 108 games, um, the Indians. Uh, but um, it's just much more fun when it's competitive. And, 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 and I mean, people up here, because it's so expensive to go to Boston, they want to. Fl- they'll fly down. Well, we know. We, we know. <laughs> well, but it's fun, you know. And, and, well, uh, and thankfully, they spend a lot of money at businesses down here. <laughs> Actually, yeah. we do appreciate. Well, we used to have a thing where, um, when obviously before Washington came back, and there was um, there were a whole bunch of people who worked in Washington, mainly in politics, uh, that they, they they wanted to come down for. Um, uh, Red Sox and um, Orioles games. So they were they, they were uh, they, they were looking for a name. They contacted me, and I told them it had to be. They wanted the name of somebody who played for the Red Sox, Orioles, and, and Senators, and the old Senators. It had to be Willie Tasby, who once took off his cleats in the outfield because there was a thunderstorm coming. He wanted his cleats attracting the lightning, and uh, so they had the Willie Tasby fan club. They used to take two buses and come down from Washington. One of them was even Gene Orzel, later a later a great labor leader for the uh, for the union. And um, it, it was that the whole thing with the, the Willie Tasby fan club and the, the Baltimore fans screaming at the at the, all these Washington politician types. And then it was just so much fun. And you know they were all, they were good. They, they they really were. This is enough the late seventies when the Orioles had great teams and the Red Sox weren't bad. Right. And, uh, it was just sort of fun. And, and, uh, that's the way it should be. Toronto's a great city. You know, Tampa attracts yeah. a lot of people from New York and Boston. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. yeah that's a really diplomatic way of saying it. Pete. <laughs> yeah, we, need, 
we need that again. I mean, it's. Uh, I mean, I hope that that there are enough people around to bring back the icon- iconic classic nature of those Orioles teams, which was so funny. I mean, um, the, the sense of humor and and everything, plus to have one of the 12 most important players in the history of the game, Cal Ripken, yeah. in his hometown, yep. um, is was really fun. So I'm I'm. Believe it, yeah, you can tell. I, 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 I'm really excited. I, I don't expect um, that they'll avoid a 10-game losing streak at some point this season, but I do believe that the uh, the tide has turned here. Peter Gammons, it is always an honor and a privilege. Thank you so much for taking the time for us this morning. We really Thank appreciate it. Thank you very it. much.